is sowing some seed, scattering it on the ground. The birds fly down and peck some of it up, and it doesn't even get a chance to sprout. Some of it falls by the wayside. But some of it falls into better ground. Some of it falls in rocky soil. That's better than the wayside. At least in the rocky soil, it sprouts. Some of it falls into weedy, thorny ground. That's still better than the wayside and better than the rocky soil. For here, it sprouts and even puts down some roots. But only some of the seed falls into good soil sprouts, puts down roots, and bears fruit. As Jesus says in this parable, the seed is the word of God. The truth which God teaches us through his church, through his scriptures, through the saints. And there is no difference between this seed and that seed. The seed that the birds ate is the same as the seed that sprouted in good soil and bore fruit. The difference is in the soil. The difference is in the human heart that either receives or rejects the Word of God. And today I think it's important for us to recognize that there is some ground that is not even mentioned in this particular parable. Human nature being what it is, our habits being what they are, whenever we see a parable, we always want to look at ourselves as the guy wearing the white hat. The bad guy that wears the black hat and does all the bad things. We want to look at that as being them, not us. And so we look at this parable and obviously we want to see ourselves as the fertile soil. And so when we look at all the bad soils, we automatically conclude, well that must be th those people out there on the outside of the church, those that don't have anything to do with God, those that thumb their nose at church and don't even show up. And so I think it's important to refocus ourselves, to realize that there is a plot of ground which Jesus didn't even mention in this parable, because it wasn't his point. And that is, there is ground even farther out than the wayside, which the farmer did not even sow. See, a farmer farms his whole plot of ground, some falls on the ground, some falls by the wayside, but none of it falls three miles away by the river. Nobody accidentally drops seed in the next county away from where the field was. A person who missed Vespers because they were out drinking with their buddies, getting drunk, slept in until 10 o'clock this morning because they had a hangover. Then finally got up and just decided to go out and hang out with his profane buddies and do whatever he wanted and did not hear one word about the gospel. Did not read one verse from the scriptures. Did not hear one ounce of truth preached in a sermon. That is not somebody on whom the seed has been planted. Now maybe it was five years ago. Maybe it was ten years ago. But yesterday and today, no seed is even being planted there. He is not even near enough to the field to have the seed planted. So these are not the people that are referenced by the bad soil here. To even get to be bad soil, you have to be close enough to the church to have the seed planted, to have the Word of God preached to you, to hear the truth. 
which means you're likely to already be one of those people that thinks of yourself as the good guy, as the good soil. So all the people that we would like to put in that category of bad soil are not even the point of this parable. They're not even on the wayside getting the seed planted on them and the birds eating it up. They're even farther out where the seed right now is not falling. And the fact that those people exist, whether they be in a tribe somewhere in the jungles of Africa, whether they be an aborigine in Australia, or whether they be somebody right here in southern Illinois who simply has no connection to the church, they do not read the Bible, they do not hear the gospel preached. That means that you need to be the one, if you know anybody like this in your life, you need to be the one scattering the seed. Because it may not be bad ground. It may just not have had any seed thrown on it for a while. Maybe five, ten years ago some seed was planted and their heart was like adamant stone. Like the rocky soil in the parable. But you don't know what erosion that the suffering of this life and the consequences of sin have done in battering that stone converting it into a soft and sandy soil that water can soak into and fertilizer can soak into. And maybe it's just waiting for that seed. Maybe God has already taken the filth of their sin and has converted it into fertilizer so that if you will just go plant that seed, it will not be rejected again, but it will sprout, it will put down roots, and it will bear fruit, and that person will come to Christ. Do not assume that because somebody has no connection to the church, that their heart is totally hard and unreceptive. Maybe nobody has done any planting recently. But this parable is not for them. This parable is for us. Those of us who do have the word preached to us, those of us who do read the scriptures, those of us who do have the seed of the word of God planted in our hearts, and among those of us who have the riches of the Word of God planted on our hearts, there are still good soils and bad soils. The first of the bad soils is by the wayside. The seed is planted. The Word of God is placed there. But it doesn't even have the chance to sprout and to try to put down roots because Satan comes by and snatches it up. The birds eat up that seed before it even has a chance. What if we come to church and the word is preached and it's planted on our hearts, but we are talking to one another instead of listening to the word of God? What if we come into God's house and we cry or we throw a fit? We throw a tantrum right in the middle of church and we do not listen to our parents instead of listening to the Word of God. What if we come into church and... It's not just a matter of closing our eyes and resting our eyes, but what if we actually just fall out of sleep? You're dead asleep, dead to the world. Well, physically you can be present, but you can still be missing the Word of God that is being preached. Or you can be alert as possible. You can have your eyes wide open. You can be facing in the correct direction, but your mind can be absent. You can be daydreaming. You may be right here looking at me, but you keep getting sidetracked because you really want to think about the finances. You really want to think about that stuff that you have to work on for your job. You're really preoccupied with this family situation, with relationships, with all this other stuff that's going on. These are the sorts of things that for that period of time turn our hearts into that wayside. The Word of God goes out. The seed is planted. But it never gets a chance because you never listened. You never heard it. 
It went out. It came to you. You were physically present. But an hour, two hours from now, if we're sitting at lunch and I mention, hey, what was the sermon about today? Hey, what scripture did Sadiq and Jeremy read today? And you say, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I wasn't really paying close enough attention to even remember it an hour later. Then that seed that falls by the wayside, the birds eat it up, and it never gets a chance to sprout and to bear fruit in your life. You physically were in the right place, but you did not hear, you did not listen, you did not receive it. Now there is better soil. It's called the stony, rocky soil. It's very shallow. <coughs> and how could this be better soil? Well, it says in Scripture, we just read in the Gospel of Luke today, it says that the rocky soil is for those who hear and receive it with joy. You, you've, not, you've not just heard it and it went in one ear and out the other, but you actually heard and you received it and you thought about it. And usually, by this point, we're thinking, man, this person is a really good Christian. You know, the bad people are those who stay out of the church. The bad people are those who maybe show up to church and don't pay attention. But man, if you're physically in the right place, if you're showing up to church and you're listening, and not only are you listening, but you're, you're agreeing with joy. You're hearing every word that's preached. And you're saying, Amen, I agree with this. This is awesome. By this point, we normally pat ourselves on the back and say, See, this right here, that's it. I'm a good Christian. I showed up to church. I listened. I can tell what you're talking about. And I agree with it. Well, that gets you from being wayside soil to being rocky soil. Because it says in Scripture that the rocky soil people hear it and receive it with joy. And the seed sprouts. Looks like a healthy little plant. But then when the midday sun beats down on that poor little plant that has no root, it dries up. It shrivels, crumbles into dust. And there's nothing left. And the ground is left just as barren as it was before the seed was planted. Have you ever been in church and heard the Word of God preached? And you understood every word. And you even said amen and agreed with every word. But then you went home, slept it off, and got over it. That's stony soil. It sprouted, but just for a couple of hours. You got excited about it, maybe even for a few days, but then you forgot about it. You didn't give it any place to actually put down roots and bear fruit in your life. Now there's another kind of soil. We've looked at the wayside. We've looked at the rocky soil. There's also weedy, thorny soil. Now this soil is deep. It's not like the rocky soil. This soil is rich and fertile, not like the rocky soil. In this soil, the seed not only sprouts, but it puts down roots too. And there is still no fruit, because the cares of this life are the weeds and the thorns that choke that little plant and strangle the very life out of it. <coughs> now remember what we said earlier. The people that are totally outside the church, that are involved in sin and debauchery and just reckless abandon and turning their backs towards God. Those aren't the people we're talking about here. So the cares of this life, those weeds and those thorns, that's not adultery. That's not homosexuality. It's not theft. It's not drunkenness. Now those are for the, those are for the people that aren't even getting planted on. The cares of this life are the good things that can be the enemy of the best things. The cares of this life are things like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? What clothes am I going to put on? My career, my 
job, the work that I do, my employment, <coughs> my relationships, the fact that I have to deal with this person that I'm married to, and this I have to take care of this kid that belongs to me, and I have to go run this errand for my neighbor. <coughs> the chores and the everyday tasks that we get to do just to take care of our homes and our vehicles. Our hobbies, our entertainments, all of these things are the cares of this world, the things that pertain to life here and now on this planet. And none of those are bad things. In fact, to some extent they're all necessary things. But it's so easy to let those become the only things. To let those become so primary and so huge and so out of control that there's simply no nutrition and moisture left in the soil to nurture the Word of God so that it may sprout and bear fruit in your life. It's not that you're opposed to the Word of God. It's not that you didn't receive it with joy. It's not that you didn't hear it. It's just that you're too busy. You're so weighed down every day with all the stuff that you have to do, the stuff you've got to get done. You just don't end up giving the time and the prayer and the focus that is necessary to bring about repentance and change in your life in these places where the Word of God challenges you. Now these last two soils, the rocky soil and the weedy soil, are very interesting because they each have things about them that seem good. You see, there's some rocky soil right outside the church here, in the driveway. Thick gravel, stones, rocks everywhere, very, very thin soil around the rocks. And if you look at it, you'll notice that even weeds don't grow very well there. Even thorns do not grow very well in rocky soil. Shallow soil not only starves the good plants, but also the bad. And so the person who has a heart of rocky soil may boast in how free his field is from weeds. He may say, see, I'm not encumbered with all the cares of this life. I don't get all caught up into worrying about career. I don't get all caught up into spending time thinking hard about relationships and what I'm supposed to do. I don't get buried into hobbies and entertainments. I'm just kind of easygoing. Things come, they go. I don't make any of that stuff central or primary. But it's not because this person is truly diligent about pulling up the weeds. It's not because they're careful about which plants are growing in their garden. It's because they have shallow soil that starves everything equally. And yes, it starves the weeds, it starves the tares, it starves the thorns, but then it also starves the Word of God so that even it cannot sprout and grow. And then the weedy soil, the thorny soil, they boast of the depth of their soil. They boast of how deep the roots are able to go, the moisture, the fertility. They may walk you through their garden and show you this amazing, impressive, seven foot tall plant that they have nurtured and watered and cared for. It has these huge, thick leaves and there's no doubt about it, this plant is healthy and its roots go deep. But on closer inspection you look and you realize this plant is a weed. There's so many weeds, so many thorns. When the Word of God is planted, it, it sprouts and it tries to grow and then it's choked up. But boy, there are these weeds that they just pamper and water and fertilize. And they grow. Some of us in our lives can point to some weeds that we have watered some thorns that we have fertilized, that we're proud of. And you know what? Not all weeds are a bad thing. Weeds, where you want them, aren't called weeds, they're called the lawn.
the pit, a piece of grass from the lawn in your garden where it doesn't belong. Feed it and water it and nurture it until it takes over and your garden plants cannot grow and that's no longer grass, that is now a weed. And sometimes we give our energies and our efforts and our time over to things that are otherwise good, but we give them a place they don't deserve. We make them so central, so primary, that we end up with these seven foot tall weeds in our gardens while our tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and all these other vegetables and fruits wither away and never produce anything. Sometimes there's good plants in your garden that you have to pull up or transplant or move out of the way so that the Word of God can sprout and grow and bear fruit in your life. But thankfully those are not the only soils. We don't just have wayside soil and rocky soil and thorny soil. But there is fertile soil. There are those of us that are soft to the call of the Holy Spirit. We are in the right place at the right time. We hear the preaching of the Word of God. We listen to it. We receive it with joy. We allow it to sprout, to send its roots deep. We allow it to change us. We are diligent about rooting out the weeds and the thorns wherever we see that they come in conflict with the Word of God. And in that case, the Word of God does bear fruit. It sends its roots deep. It is able to bear the scorching sun in the middle of the day. It is not choked out by the cares of this life and the things that press in us every day on every side. And the Word of God makes this great plant that grows and grows and blooms and bears fruit, sometimes 30-fold or even 60-fold. We eat the fruit, we're nourished by the fruit, and we take the seeds from that fruit, and then we go out and we begin to scatter the seed again. Let all of us choose to be the right kind of soil. Let us be here not only in body, but in mind and spirit, and really hang upon every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Let's let the word of God sprout in our hearts. Let's let it send its roots deep. And let's not be shallow. And let us not allow the cares of this life to choke that, but let us protect that which is growing. Let us be the fertile soil that we may be fruitful for the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is one.